we uh, we got a tough road game. We have not played particularly well at Georgia since I've been here, and I'm not sure what it is, but I think the worst Ken Palm loss in school history was two years ago at Georgia when we they went one and seventeen. We gave them their only win, so you know we, we've we've got to come with a little bit better focus. Uh, I, I thought offensively we played as good a game as maybe we've ever ever played this year. Last game out defensively, we didn't take the step forward I'd like, so we, we'd like to try to do both, you know, get our turnovers down, have a better start to the game, and be much better on defense. So that's been, that's been the talk with practice, trying to limit turnovers, get our defense uh, where it needs to be, and, and Georgia's improved. I mean, they're a lot better than they've been since I've been here, so. I mean, they uh, their only home loss, I believe, is to Tennessee, and they should have should have won that one. So they, they've been playing great, particularly at home. I see they've had pretty good crowds. So our guys are going to have to get themselves locked in. And, and this is a game where, you know, if we're trying to win the SEC, you know, we're half game up on Tennessee. We're we got to go into games like this and win them if we want a chance to win win the win the league. So uh, our. Uh, our guys have had two pretty good practices. I think we're in a decent spot, but we need to bring it tomorrow. Yeah, Coach, uh, this is a little off topic, I guess, but the, the Bob Cousy and the Jerry West Awards put out their top 10 candidates. Mark's not on either of those lists. Just how do you think he's been playing? How deserving do you think he is of that recognition? Yeah, I, I don't know who's on those lists. I haven't seen them. Uh, I, um, I'm not even sure who determines who's on those lists, but I, I can't, in no disrespect, who's on those lists. I'm sure there's some really good players on both lists, but I mean, if you look at what Mark's doing, I mean, you look at where the SEC ranks compared to other conferences in the country. He's leading the SEC in scoring. He's the most efficient player, and it's hard to do that. I would say he's probably the most efficient guard. I haven't looked at those numbers here recently, but I mean, he was top five in Ken Palm's National Player of the Year rankings, I think, going into this last week. He's been player of the week multiple times in the SEC. We're leading the league in first place by ourselves right now. So at a time when the leading scorer in the league's also on the, you know, sometimes the leading scorer in the league's on a team that's at the bottom and they get no respect. When the leading scorer in the league's on a team that's winning the league by themselves in first place, it's, to me, it makes no sense why he wouldn't be on either of the lists. So I, uh, whoever whoever's deciding who's on these lists, I don't think he's looking at everything going on in college basketball right now, to be honest with you. I'm not going to take credit for this stat, but uh, Tide Hoops history charted and it said you had 22 technical fouls uh, in your Somebody sent it to me. They, I thought it was 21. Did they it's come 21 up with games, but you had the double tech. Oh, so 20. Okay. Yeah, I forget, uh, yeah, I didn't forget about that. Yeah, to, to go back to your first one here, you had said that you're usually good for one a year. So Is that what I said? Yeah, you're kind of over that average. Is there something about these games that maybe br – is it, is it the SEC kind of brings out another level in you, or is some of it you, – you mentioned sometimes you can use it to, you know, uh, rally your team. Is, what, what, yeah. Is there I didn't realize I had – so I, I, I – somebody did send me the 21, but did, and if that would make sense if I had two in one game. So what are we four and a half games through, with twenty two techs? You're seventeen and four in those. Seventeen and four in those games. games. Yeah, I, you know what? We should probably get more techs then for seventeen and four. The seventeen and four is a higher winning percentage than uh, than our overall winning percentage. So, I, I I will say, sometimes there's a uh, intensity level that needs to be brought to the game that, you know, if you come at the guys, sometimes they they don't handle it as well, so you take the intensity and direct it elsewhere. Sometimes I'm just really upset about a call. Sometimes I'm trying to make a point. Sometimes I, I just make bad, bad decisions. So there's probably uh, all different reasons I've gotten that many. I, I don't really try to get that many. It's not a, necessarily a positive stat, but I uh, what, did, what did we, we're going into five games, so four and a half games, what's that, about five a, it's about five a year we're averaging, huh? That's true. That ain't that bad, one a month. <laughs> it's like four or five a year. I uh, Listen, I just had Terry Oglesby the other day. I, I, it's great. I think I'm in a much better place with him than 
when uh, when he tossed me out of the game. We won that game too, by the way. And we were down. What were we down against Mississippi State when I got tossed? We were down. It was under seven minutes to go, if I remember right. And I think we were down double digits, close to it, ten, eleven. You'd have to look it up. I knew, do know that when I got tossed, we came back and won after being down. So sometimes it works. Sometimes I need to just shut my mouth. So we'll uh, we'll try to get our guys inspired without getting teased because because you do hand the, the other team two free points usually, which I'm not being an analytics guy. That's not usually a good move to hand two free points to the other team. Yeah, you talked after the game about defense and how much – I mean, you've been preaching it. You're going to continue preaching it. Uh, what specifically are you doing recently or since that last game uh, that may be a little different to help with defense, or where is that all at? Yeah, I um, – pick and roll coverages, I think we've got to clean them up. We're not – you know, our guards aren't as tough into the ball as they need to be. Our bigs are not – you know, they're kind of getting caught where, you know, we've been trying to be more aggressive. They've been caught where they're behind and then trying to still come up and blitz the ball screen, if you will. And if you're late on that blitz, then they're getting split. And they're able, like, we've got to know when we're supposed to do what we're supposed to do and, and do it on time. And if and if you're late doing it, then there's, you know, it's not going to work. So it's some of it's like getting the guys to be a little more focused on what the other team does well so that we're alert to it before it happens and we're ready to defend it at the point it happens, not a half second too late. I just think got too many guys reacting to plays instead of being a little more proactive and knowing what's going on. That, that We haven't made any major – it's hard to make major changes with – I mean, if you make any – like this would be a week you do it. You play Saturday off Sunday, practice Monday, Tuesday – but it, it, even that, it's hard to make come in and make major changes. I mean, if you're going to make any kind of major, probably hard to do at this point in the year. But if you're going to make any significant changes, you probably got to wait till that off week, which we haven't had here in the past, but we do this year. So if we're going to if we get to that off week and still don't like what's going on, that would be a time you can make some major changes. You mentioned already the last time you went and played at Georgia, the. One and seventeen, their one win in SEC play. Have you used that game to kind of motivate or warn the team this year, or have you just been focused on this year's matchup? I I think I addressed it once, just like what can happen if you're not ready to play. Um, you know, because we've played some teams that our guys maybe if they're paying attention to social media and standings and stuff wouldn't necessarily have the respect they need to have for. And I, I use it at that point. I haven't used it here for this Georgia game because this year's Georgia team is nothing like they're not going to be one in seventeen. But we have played teams that, you know, don't have a win, that aren't as good in the league, and and you got to take them seriously, or you could end up getting popped like we did two years ago. I think it was after this last game against LSU when you talked about Davin Cosby, or somebody asked you about him getting more minutes, and you talked about just guys that are going to work hard at practice. Do you feel like at this point, over a third of the way into SEC play, it's still rotation minutes are up for whoever's going to play defense and play hard? I do, actually. Like, and it'd be nice to have a set rotation by this point. This isn't the way it's gone with this team. I think there's definitely minutes up for grabs, like who plays well. You know, our front court, you know, we, we, we started the four guards with all the tough front court players that we had and the depth up there, you know, to start four guards means it's a lot of competition up in the front court as to who's actually going to play. So, like, those minutes are for sure up for grabs. I think even, you know, with the guards, if we're going to play guards a little bit more, like, they're going to have to rest. Who else can play in those minutes? So, yeah, I, I think there's some guys that have definitely established themselves as some of the better players on this team that are going to play. But even them, if they're not – playing hard on the defensive end we're not going to leave in the game I mean they're going to start out playing but we can't leave guys in the game that aren't giving us winning effort if we're trying to win games hey, Nate I want to get back to to working the officials uh, you know is that a part of the game that you enjoy walking that fine line between getting your point across and getting a technical foul and do you have a favorite technical foul story I mean <laughs> listen I uh all the way back to my high school days, I think I've been a little, probably more than a little, probably a lot, a lot more intense, you know. And it, it just kind of the intensity of the game gets directed different areas, and 
officials tend to make some calls you don't agree with sometimes. I, 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 I don't. I'm not sure that I enjoy it, but I, I'm, I'm gonna. Let, if you know me, I'm gonna let you know. Like I, I don't. You know, sometimes I don't have a filter, so I'm gonna let you know when I disagree with a, a call. I, I think I sometimes I need to work on picking my points. I think sometimes it goes a lot better when you're not making any point on every call you disagree with. I um I you know I maybe didn't work for the I was pretty fiery as a high school coach, and then I went to work my two years as an assistant Division One for were for Coach Hurley, who doesn't necessarily have the uh, you know he gets a few technicals himself. Yeah, I talked to him a, a couple weeks ago. He's, uh, you know, I think he had a, he had a few technicals that first year. I tried to talk to him about maybe getting a few less technicals and kind of like calling the kettle black. I think at this point, it looks it's somebody. I told somebody that now it sounded a little absurd, but I I don't know if there's. I mean, the one where Terry tossed me wasn't particularly great. That uh. The issue with that one was his boss was in the crowd, and I looked at his boss a couple of times. That doesn't go over very well. So now, if there's a director of officials in the crowd, I don't I usually try to reference the. We did have the uh, national director of officials same front row in the Purdue game. There's a few calls that didn't necessarily go our way that game. He made it really easy. He was like sitting right there. I, uh, you know, I, I yeah, I, I, I got to be better with not a. Coach to get. I tell myself every time I'm walking out to the floor from the locker room, just coach your team. Just coach your team. I know Danny Hurley, I think, had it written on his wrist at one point. Like, it's, there's a little bit of that with me, too. Like, like, the more time and attention I spend on the refs, the less I'm spending on my team. And my job is to actually coach my team. But there is a point you do need to make, I think, sometimes when, particularly if the same call is not being called over and over again, and it's hurting your team I think you got to make point a few times so I'm not going to say all of my technicals were uh productive ones because I didn't necessarily want them all but 17 and 4 right you know so some of them got some of them got the point across and we or fired the team up or whatever happened and we won 17 of those 21 games I got T's in so I, I, I to say I enjoy arguing with another Adult male, no, I don't enjoy arguing with other guys that I because I respect most of the referees, but sometimes you got to make a point. All right, thanks. <laughs>